history of how you acquired the property, the trees. All right, uh, I uh, come out of the service in 41, uh, 47, and uh, Eloise and I got married, and uh, we uh, got this farm here from our parents, my parents. Uh, they were passed away in 69 and 74. We bought it in 74. And uh, I, was, I was raised on this farm here. And I used to bring my mule right here and stand in, in the shade, let him cool while I rested too. I done walk behind that mule with plowing. And uh, it, it's got quite a history behind it. Uh, as far as the tree, I don't know how old it is. I've heard some of them say it could be four to six hundred years old. But uh, I, uh, nobody knows. Uh, I, uh, I don't know what what else to say about it other than we just look after it and try to keep it up and. Uh, Hope nothing ever happens to it. Hey, uh, uh, once again, uh, uh, this is the Spooner Live Oak down here south of Iron City, Georgia. We have a, a, a group of people here. We're trying to measure and document this tree. We've got Eli Dickerson with Fern Bank, Mark McClellan with Georgia Forestry, and D&D &D, uh, Tree Service, David Edwards. I'm Steve Cross with Cross Sawmill. And uh, uh, David's the uh, co-host, but we're down here uh, trying to measure and document this tree which we're going 54 inches DBH, which is diameter breast height, which that's determined from the ground level, but we got to figure out where the ground's at. We know it's down there somewhere, but, but where that somewhere is at, we got to determine. And uh, Eli, could, could you say a, a couple of words about what you were thinking about the sure. uh, uh, ground? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as these big old trees like this get so huge they start to get really flared roots you can see the roots flaring out in every direction all the way around the tree so obviously ground level is not going to be up on one of these root flares it's going to be down here lower you want to get as close to the trunk as you can and they've got what i call these little pockets in between the root flares and if you can find a spot down here about as low as you can get but also as close to the trunk as you can get you want to go four and a half feet up from there but you can't lean your tape against the trunk. You gotta take it vertical. And then what I do is use a clinometer so I can see where zero degrees is from my eye, right across 54 inches, mark it on the trunk. And this is where it's helpful to have a couple people, which we got more than a couple today, so we'll be all right. Get someone to hold the tape here and wrap it around. So that's what we'll do today. And then we'll do the height. That gets a little trickier. Um, and crown spread as well. I mean, this thing has a humongous crown spread, so we're going to take, I'd like to take quite a few measurements and get an average of how big around the crown is. That sounds good. Hey, hey and another thing, uh, David had brought a, a string line and some levels. And, sure. And, and when we get our 54 inches, we can put the string around it w with the uh, string line, and, and we'll know we're level. Yeah. Or, or, or as close as we can get. Yeah, or, yeah. Or that, yeah, good point. So when you, when you go around, when you wrap uh -huh. around the trunk, uh -huh. to your point, you got to make sure it's level. Uh -huh. and, uh, because and if it's like this or like this or like uh -huh. this, it's uh -huh. going to give you dis a distorted um, the, dimensions. That's right. And, yeah. and, and then the string line, and then we can use it as a guide for the tape. Right. So, so how do you do it when, when that side's low and I'm high? You remember the opening you was talking about? Well, you know, I don't even mess with that. If you use a clinometer... So this has got a little float level in there, and if you keep this at zero, if I know where I started is at zero, zero degrees, then I'll come around just a little bit, make sure that's at zero, go around a little bit more. I don't even mess around with digging in the dirt and all. No, I don't. Yeah, you elevate. Yeah. That's what I said. You're going back off out here to shoot it. Yeah. So we're going to go around level. 
if you got 54 inches here, all I need to do is get my eye level with this, shoot this at zero, and then what I'll do is step back as you guys wrap the tape so, around. So starting point is going to be real critical though, because yeah. it's going to be higher, it's going to be lower here. Than right. Well, here's what happens. Also, over time, I mean, how old is this tree? Hundreds of years old. So all of this, where the ground used to be, isn't the same as it was 200 years ago. So. For this tree, I'm okay with taking the low spot because this is just a lot of leaf litter and duff that's built up over time. And everywhere else is pretty level. If this was on the side of a mountain or something, which live oaks don't grow, but if it was, then we'd have a whole different set of circumstances. But for this, I'd go 54 inches up there. And then I'll step back as you guys wrap the tape and I'll make sure we're at zero going all the way around. So most foresters and arborists you speak to, when they talk uh, about tree size, they'll talk about diameter, how big the tree is. The diameter of the circle of the trunk, and that's directly across the circle what the diameter is. Now the funny thing about champion trees, for some reason in the 1930s, this organization, American Forest, came up with a system where trees get one point for every inch in circumference. So we're actually taking circumference today. But there's this magic number called pi. You can just divide the circumference by pi and you get the diameter. So you can you can go from one to the other. Is it standard setting or is it volume of wood or what, what information is derived? From All it is is telling you how big around the trunk is at four and a half feet. You can use that to calculate things like volume, but that's then you'd have to take multiple circumference measurements higher up the tree and that that gets that gets real tricky. Uh, okay, we've got the uh, uh, Dole scale, which is the uh, one of the methods of calculating lumber volume. Mm -hmm. So you know, if, if we could estimate the height, which we did the other day, uh -huh. and we came up with thirteen to twenty thousand board feet, and that's one of the things that I feel that probably possibly in air. It, it, mm -hmm. that trunk volume is not taken into big trees. It's not. And, and as David and I were saying, no. a 500-pound hog is still bigger than a 400-pound oh, yeah. hog. <laughs> Let me tell you, just because a tree is a champion doesn't mean it's the tallest. It doesn't mean it's the oldest. It doesn't mean it's the fattest. It doesn't mean it's the widest. Yeah. It just means by this formula that was it. set up in 1938, it has the most points. All that means, that's it. Uh -huh. It has the most points. It right. means nothing else. Uh -huh. But it is a fair playing field for other trees. But to your point, this one might have more board feet. Uh -huh. Or it might have a wider crown spread. Or yeah. Well, the, the European champion, which is sort of recognized, in the, the uh, English oak in Germany, yeah. it is rec uh, recognized as having the most volume. Right. But, but I'm thinking that possibly this tree has more volume. So, but, to, but the, to truly find the volume on this tree, though, you got to put some climbers on ropes yeah, gotta, and measure. You got to know each limb. You got to do each limb. Uh -huh. You can get the trunk, the board feet of the trunk, which you, sounds like you already estimated. You can do that. But live oaks have so much wood in their limbs, you don't want to discount that. And you can't just guess from down here. You really need to get up in the tree, which you don't want me doing that. <laughs> No, right. Not, not usable, just well, countable. how much space it's taken yeah. up on Earth, oh, basically. Yeah. Volume, volume. Yeah. 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 There are ways to do that. Th th there's almost no commercial uh, market on live oak. It, it, even though it, it's a useful wood, and we have uh, uh, cut the frame for a, a 200 ton ship right. and several uh, boat repairs. The uh, uh, usable commercial use on it because of all the rampant information, among other things, difficult to manufacture. But the uh, 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 volume is just volume. If, 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 if it's just taking, like Eli said, it's just taking up space. It's just a, it's a number to compare against it, other numbers. It, it, it could be usable for something or it could not be usable. It's just, it's, just a, it's just there. It can tell us how big this species of tree can get, which is usable information. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, you guys ready to measure this? Thank you. We rolling? Okay. How's that? That's high tech, ain't it? That is. Uh, I know people keep a fork there. That's cool. uh, t t tell me what. Okay. You got a. Right. T t t t t right there. Right. Tell me where. You're perfect. Okay. Uh, well, uh, hold it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 
hey, uh, 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 make you a loop with a stick in it because I'm going to have to stretch it to uh, hold it. He's tying it off with some bark, eh? uh, yeah, it, uh, Hey, the bark ain't going to never hold. Huh? Uh, 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 hey, uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, hang on a second. We're, we're going to have to pull it. Here, here, I'll make you a handle out of that. Oh, to hold it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Red All right. Tell me when. Yeah. Tell me right what today. Hold on. All right. Now slide it. Right there, I got you level. All right. Okay. I got some more. Okay. Oh, you got more. All right. So this one's probably going to need to come down. All right. Tell me what. So down. Before, before it catches on here, bring it, bring it down. All right. Oop. Keep coming. Hold it. You can leave that one on there, and we'll okay. swap them out now. Go up just a tip, just a hair. Not right, tell me something. Uh, right there. There. Yep. Right there. All right. All right. We're going. We're good. We're ready. Trick here. I need to get some well, we, we thought about this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about it? Bring it down. Down? Yeah. Oop, I'm sorry, Eli. Okay. Gonna have to take my string license. All right. All right. I think I had you go too far down. All right. Starting to move, so keep on. Oh, okay, all right. A little bit more up. All right. All right, that's it. That's it. Okay. Keep going. Once we know that line's not moving. Yep. You didn't get the magic markers? Huh? You didn't. No, I thought you were getting the magic markers. Okay. Hey, that's called delegating, man. I had one. I, I, I had one, but uh, okay. Okay. You're going to need to go up. up. Yeah. One more. A little more. Okay. That's about it. Okay. Hey, when we get back around to Mark, Hopefully it's gonna. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's gonna match up, right? Yeah. I'm gonna hold yeah. this right here. <coughs> that help. Okay, so you got a contact point here. Bring it down a little bit. Right there. Huh? Yeah. All right, take that I one can off. Use, yeah. There you go. We thought about this before. Yeah, I'll give you can tell. <laughs> okay, Timmy. Hold on. Two bubbles. There we go. Um, just a tick. All right, bring it down just a hair. That's it. Uh huh? All right, let me get my finger on it right there. You got it, Banjo. Tight. That works good. Go for it. Match up with him. Where does it match up with him? Uh huh. It should be right. It should be right there. Okay, uh, Eli, do we want to uh, uh, level it over here too? We got one more spot, and uh, this probably going to yeah, yeah, that's going to make our angle. Thing is, if you're off a yeah quarter of an inch, this thing just goes yeah. down a little bit. Okay, let's see. Real, real close. Yeah. Should be at 
top line. That's Steve. good. Go okay. on it. The, the, uh, that's it. Yeah, I guess that. All right. Put, okay. the, put the level on it right there where, you, where your hand was. Oh, no, no, no it, 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 this yeah. thing's got a curve it's in it. So, 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 it. Yeah, it's got a curve like that. So, so if it ain't up and down, but you have to hit it there and, and hit it your side of mark. Oh, yeah, where it hangs. Yeah, over. that's yeah. level. Uh, okay, yeah. well, if, if this is still level. Level here, we didn't check it here. So, okay. It's real close. That's not gonna make. Yeah, that ain't gonna make. All uh right. -huh. Okay. Hundredth of an inch. <laughs> All right, we need to wrap. We need to wrap the tape around. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 All right. Let, 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 let me hold. Uh, uh, okay, I, I'll see if I can hold both. The, Got it. Maybe. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, somebody. Okay, right, David, come here and figure out how we're gonna fasten this stuff okay. together. Or, or uh, hey, I, I, I'll tell you, you what. Follow the. Uh, if, if if we can, uh, David, if, if, if we can change hangings. Maybe I can take my bias grips and uh, clamp it together and not cut the rake. Okay, so you, you, okay, I, I'm holding that that way and this this way. So, well, so, I mean, so, so I'm, what, I'm holding apart. It doesn't really matter where I start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, but I'm getting wore out. Okay. I, 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 I can't hold it much longer. We didn't, we didn't factor that in. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Uh, All right now let's see. Got, All right. Uh, Hang on a second. Keep some tension on the on that and we just want to follow that okay uh, uh, uh yeah you can go uh, ahead hang on david uh okay. uh, uh uh eli uh -huh. can, can, can you hold uh, this piece uh, okay. uh, hold it that way uh, okay i can't see for your own yeah you're uh you're good man it's hard to beat a country boy <laughs> <laughs> you got but, the, hell, hell i can't see yeah right, hey. i'm trying to clamp them together yeah. Yeah, grab this. Yeah, right you, got you got it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. now. Okay, let me get it. There you go. Clamp it no, Okay. Is that place. holding? I don't know. Whoop. No, no. Uh, hold well, it. Make sure you get gear. Pull it where I can see it and, and uh, uh, pull yours that way. Okay, okay now. All right, now see what happens. Yeah, got a little tension on it. All right. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we're working right here. All right, Mark's getting almost there. Okay. Right. Hang on a second. Let, let, let me double clamp it because if it slips, uh, we're going to be disappointed. All right. Okay. In the 30s. Man, look at that. We're what? over 32. Right, hold on, hold on. Okay, oh. <coughs> are, are, are we supposed to be pushing it in to, no, to follow? No, okay. Check that and see if you're Yeah, y'all probably want to make yeah. somebody get a still pick over here. Uh-huh. All right. This is the zero mark here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so y'all want to get a shot of that. All right, Karen. Kind of like... Right there, 32-1. Mm -hmm. Alright, now which one of the kids is going to do the math for us if they want to figure out the diameter? <laughs> I would just use the calculator. Okay. <laughs> what I was curious about was they pushed the tape in. Yeah, we, we, this is going to be the official. Yeah, okay. this is this All is right. the standard for... Uh, okay, so... That's right on 32-1. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, um, if I can get... We can take all this stuff off, but for the height, if I can get someone to, I need to be able to see this mark from about 50 feet away, or maybe 100 feet away. Okay. To get the height, I need to see the top and uh, we put 54 oh, okay. uh, uh, hey, if, if we leave doesn't the have bias to be, grips there, would you be able to see Oh yeah, those? as long as it doesn't fall. Okay, uh, but if hey, it does, you put a ribbon on it where you can really see it. Yeah, you uh, got hey, that tape? yeah, yeah put, put a ribbon right there between them bias grips, or, or what side of them or something. So, what you think? It's a big trick. Uh -huh. What you think, Frank? Just like a fishing pole. Uh -huh.
I wish me and Jake hadn't come yeah, kind of walk around and do That's what I was going to ask. Uh -huh. Did they really come on out now oh, yeah. and swoop to the ground, which you, I was I imagine on down. they do. Yeah. yeah. They were going down. Um, let me write this down before I forget. Yeah. I'm curious as to where Jim actually starts okay. in the trunk. So the height is where you, you use a little bit of trigonometry. I use a laser range finder. Mm -hmm. um, same kind you'd use for like hunting or whatever just it just shoots a laser beam out and based on the time it takes to bounce back to the device there's a readout in here that tells me how far that is from me so if I know if I can see the top of the tree which I could see it driving in so that's mm -hmm. good if I can see the top and I know the angle then I can figure out the height within six inches without ever touching the tree okay and what about this so height marker on the, the trunk itself is that four foot 48 inches or that's what is 54 that? and from what where, i'm going to do is from measure where the marks put, say, oh, I'm sorry. because it's going to be hard to see that little pocket with my laser from way back here mm -hmm. but i can see that string so what i'm going to do is measure the height from the string to the top and i'm going to so add 54, 54 inches okay. yeah and so you just chose an average spot here on the base to start the 54 inch mark from um the lowest I, you know if a tree's more or less on flat ground like this mm -hmm. then I would just kind of find the lowest little pocket that goes into one of those grooves those okay. root flares okay the way you're really supposed to do it is think about and this is hard but think about where the acorn sprouted we don't really know right but you kind of want to go where for the, the ground pit. height is in the very center that section. year one the first ring that tree mm -hmm. puts on that's the pith that's the center mm -hmm. but the pith isn't always in the center in a tree like this that's grown in a field, usually the center is, or the pith is right in the center, but. Yeah, because it grew evenly all the way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If okay. it was in a forest or on a slope or something like that, or had half the crown cut off, right. then it would grow different. I got you. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try the, uh, I'll do the height and then we'll do crown spread and I can get you guys to help me with the crown yeah. spread. Hey, hey Stephen, to take you out on the Jeep. You see the tag uh, on uh, there? Uh, take the, Eli uh, out on the Jeep yeah. wherever you he wants tree tag to go. You, you, you can get on there with Steve. Oliver, get, get, get in the back and, and let Eli uh, get in the front. As close as I can get where I can see the top. Sometimes the top's kind of nested in there. Eli, so there you the go. Circumference go breast height yeah, is yeah, 385 uh, uh, inches, you got you which translates to 32 feet, one inch. The height is 89 feet. And the average crown spread is 147 feet. So... The points are based off of one point for every inch in circumference, so you get 385 points right off the bat, one point for every foot in height, so that's 89 points, and then for spread, this is kind of a weird thing, but it's just something that has stuck for a long time, it's one-fourth of a point for every foot in crown spread. So I have to take this number, 147, divide by four, and I get 36.75. So we don't do decimals, we round up, so it's gonna be 511 and the Waycross Oak is 536. Now, to see if that's within 5%, I'll take the difference. 536 minus 511, and then is that within, so that's 25. 25 divided by 536 is 4.6%, so it's within 5%. So that's how we do it. Okay, a, another question, they, uh, uh, this is by far the biggest single trunk. Yes. Yeah. That I know of, yeah. but I, I live in the I, Piedmont. I, 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 <laughs> and, and another thing, when, when they measured the multi-trunk uh, trees, d did they count that space in between them? I mean, did, did they measure the individual trunks? And yeah, then... all, of them's, all of them's measured, they all unique, measured in their own unique way because they're so different. If, you, if it yeah. pours below, if it all comes down to one trunk at the bottom, they're going to measure the bottom portion of, of, of the tree. No matter how high that is, mm -hmm. right? What is yeah. the provenance of a multi-trunk tree? Are they multiple acorns to, to make that? It, yep. Most well, likely. Acorns <laughs> or, 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 and I it was literally, it could have, it could have each one of them has a pit. Sprouted, so if each one of them has a pit, they have to be separate right. acorns. Yeah. And the way, it's very hard to figure out just based on seeing a standing tree like this, but you can, if you see where you think it's two trunks, if it's two separate pits at ground level, it's considered two trunks. Well, we can don't you know that. Can determine a pit from the exterior, or do you have to go to the no, interior? You go well, <clears throat> you can't do that without cutting the tree down. Right. So what you do is take pictures from multiple angles, and then if you open that on a computer program, you can trace what you believe the pith would be based on the architecture of the tree, trace it, and just draw a line 
I mean, you could just draw it on a printed out uh, picture as well. Draw those two lines. If those two lines meet before ground level, then that would be considered two trunks. Right. But again, those lines are going to depend on who's drawing it and how they interpret where they think the pith is. Right. And live oaks are real tricky because they, they branch low. That's, that's yeah. just the kind of trees they are. How many trunks does the white cross tree have? Uh, three. The three? three, I've, three. I've never, I haven't seen that one in person, but we obviously need to go measure that. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll when see. was the last time it was measured, you know? It was, it was measured back in May, but it wasn't measured the same way that one was, so right. we got to go back and remeasure. Not as, not as uh, robustly as this one was measured? Yeah. Yeah. So we got to go back and, and remeasure. Right. I'd like to be there if y'all when y'all do it. Yeah, that'd be great. Because I'm, yeah. Live oaks are my thing, period. But I, you know, this is my first uh, one actually ever being around. Measurement. I'm glad to be a part of it. But I'd like to uh, see that one too. Yeah, so, it's impressive. Yeah. We need a picture for the website, right, Mark? A picture of the tree. Or do we already have a good one? We want. No, let's let's, one let's get a good one. With the spooners in it, right? Yeah, I, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You want, you want us to stand at the tree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, Mom. So if you go back and you... And you got to give her sugar. <laughs> go ahead. Huh? <laughs> so if you go back and measure the Waycross tree, and it turns out that this one, based on the point system that you're using, has more points, how does that get yeah. documented? Yeah. Is it documented through American Forests? Is it documented through it's, the state? It's documented through our champion tree program with the state. Okay. Through the and state. I'll go back and change it once that tree is measured. Mm -hmm. So part of my, this is a, a volunteer um, group of big tree measures, measures that I was invited to be on with American Forests. Mm -hmm. And part of the mission is to work with state foresters and state lists. I maintain the city list in Atlanta mm -hmm which we don't have any trees near this big. Yeah. <laughs> there is a 23 footer right beside Turner Field, which is a strange thing. But um, if I have one that's a state champion level, then I'll talk to Mark or he'll call me up and say, can you get to this tree and measure it? Mm -hmm. And if there's any on the national list, we'll work together as well. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this picture. Yeah. But we're trying to get all right. All right, I'm Eli Dickerson here. I'm a volunteer with American Forest. And American Forest is the national nonprofit organization that maintains the national champion tree list. Um, big trees is what they refer to them as. I'm on a national cadre of big tree measurers. So basically that's just a group of professionals and volunteers and uh, people who are passionate about trees and are working to clean up both state list and the national list and setting a standard as far as... Uh, the science involved with measuring these trees. And Georgia Forestry Commission was kind enough to invite me. Um, I work with them on a lot of the state champion trees. They were kind enough to invite me to the Spooner Oak, which is a magnificent tree. And uh, we, we can definitely verify that it will be a state co-champion live oak, which is fantastic. And uh, who knows, one day it might actually end up being a national champion tree as well. Time in the World War II. <clears throat> Roger Spooner. Uh, I'm uh, right now. I'm, I'll soon be uh, 93 years old. I joined the Navy in 1941, and the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor in December, and I uh, was. They sent for me to the Pacific. I got back home in 1943 after my ship had got sunk out from under me. I was on the Yorktown aircraft carrier. Uh, it, it, it's quiet. I was in the Carl Sea battle on May the 8th off Australia. We lost the Lexington there, aircraft carrier, and we got uh, bombed and uh, flight deck tore up and and, and bumped and torpedoed and we wound up in Pearl Harbor in the latter part of uh, May and we uh, were in dry dock there for 72 hours before uh, uh, being sent back out to sea. We thought we would be able to come home, but they didn't know it wasn't that wasn't to be. 
the uh, the next morning, whenever we uh, were going, come day, I looked and seen the sun was rising in the, on the fantail. I knew that going well. We were headed west. We wasn't headed to the states. And so, a couple of days later, our skipper, uh, Captain Buckmaster, he uh, told us that uh, where we were headed, that we'd, uh, we'd broke the uh, code on the Japs uh, 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 on the, found out all about uh, their code and all, and and told us we were headed into a battle of Midway, that the Japs was headed for Midway to take it. And uh, we uh, we wound up there getting in touch with the Japs, meeting them at, uh, on June the 4th. And uh, uh, we, we wound up. We didn't. We got sunk on. Actually, we went under on June the seventh, uh, at about seven forty-five. But uh, the uh, Japs lost four aircraft carriers in that battle that we were in, and then we lost to Yorktown. I was on it when it sunk. Uh, and they wound up carrying us back to Pearl Harbor. I was there in Pearl Harbor for a good while at Admiral Nimmons' headquarters, SINPAC. And uh, then, uh, I, I, I was, now this was getting into, I was in 41 when I first went over there, and then this year was 43. So I, I hadn't been home since I was in the Navy, and I, I was driving for a one star Admiral at SINPAC. And I told him one morning, I said, I want to I wanna go home. I said, I ain't been home. I said, I, I just, I'm just ready to go home. I said, he said, when you want to go? I said, I'm, anytime you let me go. <laughs> so he told me to pack my stuff up and go to the receiving barracks. And uh, so, by gosh, they found out that I was putting in for submarine duty. I had to put in for new construction, so I put in for submarine duty from, from aircraft carrier to submarine. And uh, so doggone it, they come from the sub base over there at, 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 at Pearl there and, and got me and carried me over there at the sub base. They put me on a sub. I said, that ain't going to happen. No. <laughs> so I got a hold of it, my Commodore and uh, one star admiral and told him what happened to me. He said, well, I'll I just get leave to me. He says, um, I, I'll, I'll have it straightened out. And so the next morning, by gosh, I was back at the receiving barracks, and they sent me over to down to the Honolulu. To the, I went aboard a, a USS Matzoni, or some used to be some uh, deluxe cruisers that went back and forth from the states, but they uh, went taking them over, and they were moving tr troops back and forth on them then. Anyhow. I uh, went through sub school in New London, and uh, they, they sent me from there to Australia. And uh, I went aboard a submarine in Australia, at Perth, Australia, for, uh, uh, for 43, 44, and 45. And uh, we'd go out every, uh, for about six, 60 to 90 days on the sub, but no people don't know about it. Uh, and we'd be gone that length of time, and we'd come back in, and uh, they would uh, give us two weeks' leave. We'd uh, give them an address where we'd be, and we partied and had a big time, didn't know where we were. And by the way, just make it let you know how, how the thing was going. We knew we'd lost a lot of subs, but we didn't know how many, but we finally found out we'd lost 52 subs in World War II. And so I, we, we were naturally partying and having a big time while, while we was alive. Uh, we didn't know whether we were going to make it or not whenever we went out and come back. Uh, we wound up in, 
in uh, 45 over in, uh, they carried uh, some tenders over to Guam over there. And we were tied up side of one of them at Guam and uh, they had us up in the hills up there, recreation they call it. <laughs> All at once we heard guns were firing down in the harbor and the horns were blowing and everything and the war was over. And uh, so we uh, we wound up then. I, I was transferred then to a, a tender there, and we wound up then in Yokosuka, Japan. And um, we we I was there, there until first day of November in '45, and we I was there whenever the Japs signed the papers and everything there. They, they were in the harbor there. They, they went. I was, I was watching them while they was there. And when I made it back to the States, come back through the Panama Canal. I went I went through it in 41, Christmas Day, and I went back through it on in uh, November 45, four years later. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was quite a, quite a deal there. They, they transferred me then to Key West. I went aboard USS Sea Leopard in 483 in Key West. And I was on it down there uh, 18 months and got my discharge. I, I, I joined the Navy for a uh, uh, regular Navy. I thought maybe I might make a career out of it. And I, I, born, I joined it for six years. They call it, that was regular Navy. Uh, four years was reserved. I said, well, no, I'm a, when I joined, I was, I was after getting off the farm, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd, get, I'd done had enough of following that mule. When I, but um, no, I, my ship was sunk out from under when I was 19 years old. I wasn't, it was, it was quite an quite experience for a young boy, I tell you. And I thought, I'd, thought I'd never make it. So I... I don't know. I, I guess that's after I. No, I did. I had an accident in Key West. I partying down there, riding a motorcycle, and I got I got crippled up down there, wrecked, and I never was able to put my uniform back on anymore. And I got discharged from the hospital in Key West. <laughs>